for game one in the grand final. And we have the first move. We have the first move. It is a king's pawn opening, and Ferruja has switched up his opening approach. This, this time is the Spanish opening that Roy Lopez. Two days ago, Ferruja went for the Sicilian and was quickly punished. Uh, White got a big attack back this, wiped him off the board in that first game. So he's definitely uh, spoken to a coach. He's definitely uh, kind of taken on new advice. And this is one of the most solid setups for Black in hundreds of years at the top levels. And uh, eventually Magnus pushes his pawn to d3. To, so taking a slower approach to this game. Uh, copycat here from Ferruja, and uh, all pieces will stay on the board here for a long time, so it's going to be tension packed but rock solid for both players. Uh, what do you think here, Simon? Your prediction was correct. Yeah, I think it's a very good choice um, from a grazer. I wasn't sure if he might try to burn in or something, but this is more his kind of style because uh, he's keeping the pieces on. He has great experience, as we spoke about yesterday, on the sort of in these kind of structures. He's probably the world's leading expert in the, in the Italian, which is very similar. The board move it to the square in front of the queen, and uh, Magnus has taken the second most popular move, which is just to take a precautionary move, give the cast king some air, and control the chief four square. Uh, is it just me or is Magnus moving a bit slower than he usually does? Considering he's got vast experience here, Magnus basically became world champion on the back of his uh, kind of play with 1e4. Uh, he was pretty much only uh, using this opening as white back in the days when he was kind of rising through the ranks uh, when he was back in Farouche's age. And uh, yeah, it's a bit strange. It feels like he's freestyling, maybe trying to avoid Farouche's preparation, but either way, in past days, just this week, throughout the uh, Julius Bear Generation Cup, Magnus has been very fast in the opening, uh, getting a quick time advantage against most of his opponents here. He looks surprised. So is it, yeah, is this a sign he is surprised? Is this a, part of a sign he has something very tricky up his sleeve? What do you think? Possibly. Uh, it might be just he's looking for a sophisticated manoeuvre, um, something that Ferruja wouldn't have expected uh, before. But the problem here is that uh, this is so well explored, as we mentioned, it's one of the most popular types of openings in chess, at least the pawn structure. Uh, so all the manoeuvres are well known. Um, it's a bit strange, at least to me, that he's thinking, uh, yeah, for white, two minutes now in the tank. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's just trying to think what, what kind of middle game strategy he wants to go for here. I mean, uh, uh, there's various ways that you can play this as white. You can play it quite slowly um, and, and you can just develop your pieces and he seems to be going for this strategy here. Or you can try to strike in the centre uh, as well by pushing a pawn. So I guess that's why he's spending a bit of time. It does seem a little bit odd that he, yeah. he's thinking so much here. This, this move, I... I it,
going for the win. He's going for the win, Magnus. It's only Magnus here who can really win. Even if the white A-pawn drops off, it should still be uh, trying for white there. But, okay, he's got two past pawns and a knight. Can he start running with them, or can the black rook hold them off? He's hanging by a thread here for Ferruja, but he might be in time. Oh, he wins the white A-pawn. Interesting ending here, though. So you've got equal material. Uh, the rook, much better than the knight, but those two pawns a little bit dangerous. I mean, uh, I, I don't think they're going to be enough because you've only got one pass pawn here and that shouldn't be enough against the rook. You could even lose this if you push too much as white, but pretty much all the danger is uh, is with black here. And I'm uh, not really sure where this game turned as well. I mean, Ferruja, I think David pointed out, um, here we see maybe a pawn dropping. He gave up his bishop pair and that, that, that was probably the mistake made. And what can Magnus do here? Can he... Uh, throw his pawn forwards, do anything like that. I, I, I was I thinking he might as well, right? Yeah, and uh, there he comes, two pass pawns headed towards the black king. Oh, Magnus captured that with the knight. I think he's just trying to head it towards a, a draw now. I, I, I think I think he's kind of realized that it's, it's not going anywhere else. And there's not enough material here or, or really any danger for either side to, to lose this one. The black rook moves away as far as it can from the knight to avoid any forks and White only has one pass pawn, uh, but the black rook is very strong here, uh, tying down white, so should be should be a, a, a relatively safe draw here. We should mention, if all the pawns disappear, just a rook versus knight, it is a draw, and okay, Ferruja gives up his winning chances, it's going to fizzle out to king versus king, everything off the board, fight to the bitter end, it's a draw. There it is, uh, game one, a draw, still tied, uh, Magnus